Hey YouTube, that Brady Chick here, and this is my very first vacation vlog. Yes, you heard me. Vacation <laughs> vlog. Funny enough, it's really not the first. The first should have been the Jamaica vlog, but we all know what happened to that. So, this is really my second vacation vlog, but first to you guys. So, enjoy. Hello, YouTube. That Brady Chick here and Kamal's Corner here as well. Kamal's Corner. If y'all didn't know, he does have a YouTube channel too. I don't know if he's gonna uh, no. reactivate it. He's doing a vlog right now. Vlog and podcast. Okay, true, YouTube true. channel may come, may not. We'll see. But as you can see, based on that mountain in the distance there, we are here in St. Lucia. We did touch down. We're kind of at like a family resort, so like it's not adults only or anything, but it's on a beach. So that's kind of what sold us. And it was kind of reasonable in price too. So we're gonna go eat and then take a little dip in the beach water. Then we'll talk to you guys soon. Later, bye. YouTube, it is day two in St. Lucia at the Starfish Hotel. What's your experience so far <laughs> been like? Honestly, it started off a little bit shaky. Started off shaky. So apparently there's some type of tourism fee that we had to pay that we weren't aware of. Yeah. It's like six dollars a night per person per adult. Three dollars for a child. I uh, don't know why they would charge a child for a tourism fee, but okay. It just didn't make sense. Yeah, the resorts—it's not that big. It's fairly decent, decent size. I mean, it's—you can pretty much figure out the resort map by yourself. Figure out where everything is. Really, the staff here are very laid back. Laid back. Like, it's like they're—they're they're kind of vacationing too in a way because they're not really. Oh, do you need anything? Oh, do you need, like we have to go to them kind of thing. Like at the risk of sounding spoiled, it's kind of like you kind of expect that kind of treatment when you're going on an all inclusive, especially. Especially like we get it, this is not a five star, it's a four star, but it's like four star resorts still have a certain level of customer service. It's not terrible, but it's like mm, not really what I was expecting. It's next to a really nice mountain. I'll probably insert a clip right here because you can't see it from here. That is probably the selling point, plus the beach that they have like, yeah. beyond the actual resort. Yeah, That's forget really the nice. weather. The weather, is, the weather is nice. The weather is really nice too. Like right now it's 30 degrees Celsius. It feels nice and hot, perfect to take a dip. They also have the pool with like a little uh, volleyball net in between. <laughs> We can play some pool volleyball with some of the residents. We didn't get to mention this either, but the rest of the vacationers that are here are a little bit, a little bit older, of course. Um, so we don't really have a lot of people to connect with here. It's not impossible to, but you know, it's a little bit harder versus when we were at the Jamaican resort. We saw a lot of people our age, they were a lot more lively. And because it was adults only, it's like we had a lot more things to do that catered to our generation. There was always something happening. This is definitely more of a laid back, relaxation kind of vacation, which is kind of what we needed anyway. Considering that my girl is officially a nurse, licensed hey, nurse. registered nurse, talk to me guys, all right. He's also a limited licensed property manager. Like, let's not forget that. Since then has been 
been promoted to leasing consultants. Yay! So we both have our licenses, and that's pretty much the main reason we're here, like just to celebrate our successes and the fact that we both hit a milestone. It's safe to leave the resort as soon as you walk out. There's like a whole strip of restaurants and malls. Gross is lit. I stand corrected. It's actually Gross Ile. That's the correct pronunciation for it in St. Lucia. Shout out to my former co-worker, Keddy, for telling the girl what's up, because I had no idea. Like, they're infamous for their Friday night street parties. So everyone and their mom yesterday was telling us about this street party. Like, go to the street party, it's so fun. We were already planning to go anyway, but like the fact that they were hyping it up means that, okay, maybe it really is what it sounds like, you know? So when we went, in the beginning, we were just like, what is this? <laughs> This is not our kind of music. Like, is this really what they were hyping up? It was not given. And later on, it's like they started switching it up and they just went straight into their Lucian Soka. And if you know me, you know I love my Lucian Soka. Like, the beats are always on point. It's my favorite category of Soka ever. So I'm not really a Marshall Montana fan. And the thing too is, when you're visiting an island, embrace the culture. Get to know the culture. Don't come down here and expect American music. Don't, don't get mad at the DJs for playing the music that literally originates from the place you're visiting. You are the tourist, okay? They are the locals. They will play their local music. So get to know it. Like, don't walk away when they're playing unfamiliar music to you because this is their culture. You came here for a reason. Get to know it. 100%. Like, you're not in America. Don't expect, I got a feeling. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, we're not here for that. That is actually one of my pet peeves. It's like, if I'm visiting your island, like, please give me your island. That was one of the things that I didn't really like about Jamaica much when we were mm. vacation there. But like Lucia definitely gave us Lucia. Yes, I and think Lucia made up for Jamaica's uh, nightclub experience because they mainly played American music down there to the point where we had to literally pay them to play some island music. Yeah. Like we shouldn't have to do that. We're on an island, play island music. It's like, <laughs> to be a common sense. And in terms of today, like our only plan is pretty much to like explore the local area, go to KFC, try out their chicken. You cannot come to the islands and say you visited the island without trying KFC. Exactly. But the thing is, every single island will say that their KFC is the best. So we're going to be the judge of that. We'll see you guys in the next scene. We're going to go ahead and head to the snack bar and then probably to the beach because it's really hot. So bye. Thanks for listening. Like, this is such an area that you can literally like market to a younger crowd yeah you know, you're doing adults only party vibe if the resort doesn't have their own nightclub bro there's a club right here buy that so here i'm showing you guys zen nightclub which is pretty much right outside the resort um we did want to go that same night but we turned into two oldies and we ended up sleeping the night away i really regret that but hey here we are this is like an rbc dupe i guess <laughs> in the islands um it's really called the republic bank but yeah that's the little bank building and then here's a clip of the street further down so this is just a souvenir shop that we went to just to pick up some stuff for our friends back home in canada and yeah just to show you guys they do drive on the left side the left side anyways that's the, the mall of saint lucia i guess i'm just calling it that because i don't remember the name of that mall truthfully but when we went inside, it was definitely giving wood by mall, but a little bit nicer because it was very, very polished in my opinion. Uh, that's a little play place up there that I was showing. And this is just a clip to show you just how clean and pretty spacious it was. And there's Kamal who's just happy to be here. Hey YouTube, it's that Brady chick here. So I'm just outside. It's like 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> you heard me, 5.30 in the morning. And I'm just here trying to catch the sunrise pretty much. It does rise on the opposite side of the resort, but I'm trying to catch something, okay? Kind of gotta watch your step because they have a lot of frogs and lizards. Just saw one jumping back into its hole, so we took another path, you know? All right, we have reached the beach. This is what the sunrise is looking like so far. Very, very peaceful at 5.30 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I want to go closer, but I do not know what's in this grass, child. <laughs> Look at how peaceful and quiet the beach is. Well, 
do what it look like. Yeah. Ooh, that's what for today. All we have planned really, well, I shouldn't say all we have planned because it might actually be a fun packed day. Hopefully. The first thing we're gonna do is hopefully get out on this beach and do some sparring. So if you didn't know, I am a retired boxer. I used to box in high school for about two years and had to quit because, you know, things were getting a little bit tough with uh, transitioning from high school to university at the time. Yeah, like I wanted to bring it back and try to spar again, like try out my boxing skills again. So my boyfriend and I are lucky to receive some free pads and free boxing gloves. Now we pretty much are gonna use it as a tradition to just work out wherever we end up like even if it's on vacation we're gonna try to work out with them that's our plan for today later on we're probably gonna come to this very same snack bar behind me and we're going to enjoy some brunch slash lunch depending on what time we get here who knows also this is the outfit of the morning i guess you could say Oh yeah, and then around two, we're trying to do some jet skiing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much what we have planned for the top of this day. Ooh, I can see some of the sun rays shooting through. Let me show you guys. There we go. That catches a bit better. Get off. I'm about to go, but I'll catch you guys in the next clip. Bye. So guys, it's actually a good thing I didn't bring you out here because this just happened in like two minutes. Look. Like, I was not expecting that. That is so wild. So it's a good thing, I guess, that Kamal was asleep the whole time because my camera, you guys, like, this camera would have been ruined. Ruined. Like, I wouldn't have any means of saving you guys in this. Like, well. God knows what he's doing. Because he told me to go back in at the right time and he told Kamal to stay asleep for the right amount of time. Because, <laughs> Lord knows. <laughs> I'm not sure how long this rain is gonna last. So, the only plan that I know for sure of now is that we're gonna eat. We're gonna eat something. But it's gonna be obviously after 11, because that's when the snack bar opens. But yeah, this rain is heavy, child. Like, I was not expecting this. Okay, now it's kind of lightening up, actually. We have reached the beach, and we're just gonna do some sparring in this nice weather. Probably have to put some music over this so I don't get copyrighted. Artlist I.O. So little did we know as well that this would be the day that we would both get severely sunburned. Yes, if you were wondering, black people do get sunburned too. Uh-huh. Yep. This is probably the second time in my life that I've ever gotten sunburned, thankfully. Um, but it was quite a strange scenario because not only did my skin peel, but my lips got swollen too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm not allergic to anything, mind you. I'm really not. But I think there was just like maybe an open sore on my lip uh, because of some rough exfoliating I did that same day. And just that in combination with the exposure to the sun um, somehow irritated my lips to the point of inflammation. So ah, here we are. Music licensing reimagined. Artlist I.O. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> visual so it almost looks like i reacted to something i ate but it actually wasn't even that it was just that i went out in the salty ocean water yesterday and not just went out but we stayed out like from like 9 a.m till i think it was actually 7 because we actually watched the sun go down too remember yeah so we were out for a long time yesterday all day and there was at one point that i noticed my lips were burning and this was like midday and I made the silly decision of coming back to the hotel room and exfoliating my lips because they felt dry. And then following that, I actually put on my lip gloss, which might have irritated it because after you exfoliate, you're exposing your skin, well, the underneath skin layers, and yeah, covering it with lip gloss was just not a good idea. So here we are, <laughs> my lips are swollen, and now we can't even do our regular routine of just hanging out on the beach. Like I'm hoping we can just get out later on and just at least go in the pool or something because I don't want to make us be a prisoner to this room today but you know I also don't want to make this worse but yeah that's pretty much the trip so far <laughs> notwithstanding St. Lucia is still a very beautiful island and this resort is okay um <laughs> the decor is very lovely but yeah that's that's all I can really say about the resort because other than that like there's been some quite um frequent disappointments so we'll get into that later but this is where we're at right now Probably give you guys an update later on today to see how my lips turn out, but yeah, this is what we're looking like right now. In addition to that, my boyfriend actually got a bit sunburnt on his shoulders. Luckily, it doesn't really show, like he's not peeling or anything, and I don't think he's that swollen, but I think he's hurting a little bit physically. We're gonna see how that turns out as well. Thanks, St. Lucia! Bye! Also, my boyfriend went out into town just now and picked up an ointment. Oh, it's Ace. Oh, Aciclovir. 
okay, I've, I've heard about this in nursing school, but this is more like a viral cream and I don't have a virus, but they did say that this is supposed to help with like the swelling and um, of the lips, especially, I guess, and sunburns and stuff like that. So we'll see. I don't recall any side effects with this one, so I think we're good. But yeah, I'm gonna try some of this and see if it works. Really, really hope it brings down the swelling because I I literally look like I just got lip injections and y'all know my lips are big enough, okay? I don't need none of that, okay? Mm, not fun. So YOLO, I'm just gonna go out here like this and try to soak in the cold. Boom. This is the man that went out and got my medication for me. I really appreciate this man right here. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> oh, you mentioned take me. care of my boo. Thank you. I feel like you can really make an adults only cater to that and have events centered around that. Hey guys, just wanna give you some context here. We're just talking about how like maybe the grounds could improve. So Kamal was able to make a connection just now with one of the managers here. And they got into it in terms of like just talking about the ways that we could amp up this place. So I just wanted him to go into that because like he has some really good ideas. In terms of starfish, like it's it's a great resort. In terms of location, it's perfect. It's right on the beach. It's in the heart of Rodney Bay, which is like their tourist attraction. You know, Friday night street party is literally 10, 15 minute drive from here. They have everything here, you know. I think they just missed the mark in terms of entertainment. Food is, I know that everyone always says Cuba has the worst food, but the food here, I feel like it could be better. If they learn how to market to the right crowd, if they market to an adults only, because honestly, this is a family resort, and we've probably only seen like three kids, three, three or four kids. I've seen a lot more adults. It, it is older. It's a more corporate type of vibe, with yeah. more retirees. Yeah, so just to continue off on what, what Kamal was saying um, earlier, sorry, I'm just looking at a crab that came out of the hole, making sure it's not coming any closer than where it is. He was pretty much just saying like they missed the mark, they really could have capitalized on this place and made it like adults only versus family friendly because there's not even really any kids here anyway, so it's like what's the point of making it family friendly? Yeah. Gorgeous. You know, they could have put live entertainment right in the middle. Like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's kind of a little area in the middle of the pool that could have easily, easily been a stage. And they have a small stage on that side there. And that area up there, the second story, could have been like the DJ booth to just light up the whole place and make it more lively, you know? Sorry, I think I saw the frog jump right into the, the crab hole. <laughs> I don't know why that, that would happen, but anyways. Yes, be prepared to see crabs and frogs. Yeah. The DJ up there with the uh, MC, and they could have had both a beach party and a pool party at the same time. Because uh, beyond the resort, there is a beach, and then of course, closer, there's a pool. So yeah. really, yeah, we could have, it could have been so vibesy. Like, you have no idea. Customer you know, service. Customer service could use some work, yes. Other than that, the grounds are beautiful. The hotel can stay just as is. It just needs those additions, you know, the entertainment, the better food, and better customer service. That's it. It's honestly, if they add the entertainment, I don't think people would really care about food like that because they're mm -hmm. having fun at the same time. Like, they need to stock up on their drinks, but... Yeah. <laughs> Every single day, something is out of stock. Of stock. Yeah. Like, the other day, peanuts are out of stock. Today, iced tea is out of stock. Straws have been out of stock since we checked in. Like, yeah. <laughs> everything is out of stock. And yeah. it's like, it's laughable at this point because it's like, what can we really do? Like, we paid all this money to come here. What are we gonna do, go back home? We can't do it, we're stuck here. But regardless, like, it's not a terrible vacation. Like, I'm sure there's been worse, you know, but it's, it's not a bad time. It's just, again, they need those little improvements and then they'll be completely fine. Yeah. Anyways, we got five minutes to oh, get yeah, to our reservation. Oh, we had a reservation. <laughs> uh, we are having Italian tonight. What is it? La Cucina? La Cucina. Oh, La Cucina. Yes, so we are going to head over to that because we don't want to be late. Anyways, bye-bye. See you in the next scene. Hey YouTube, that Brady chick here. <laughs> it is day Could six. Kenna told me camera's rolling. It is day six here in St. Lucia. And we're realizing just how severe the sun is, okay? Because his nose is stripping, 
Um, my arms kind of feel a little tender too. And then of course you guys know the lip situation, but luckily it is getting a little bit better. So don't look too close though. But anyways, this is what we're dealing with right now. So we're just trying to lather up with some sunscreen and hopefully be able to hit the pool just now because it's a nice day outside, you know? We're just trying to bask in it. Hopefully we could do some water sport, but we just have to see how that goes, yeah. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. Literally how far the waves are coming up on shore, you'll see it in a minute, is where we used to put our beach chairs, but now we can no longer, because look at that. And the winds are very, very heavy, so that should tell you enough. So little did we know when we first booked this trip that we were signing up for hurricane season. So keep in mind it was June, so I don't think it was their typical time period for hurricanes to occur. Yeah, this was definitely a very unique situation indeed. Um, so luckily our flight was the following day and not on the seventh day. Otherwise we would have had to stay a full extra night and pay completely out of pocket with no compensation. Thanks Air Canada. The waves are pretty bad today. Just couldn't capture it in this moment, but yeah, it's pretty strong. Oh God, oh God, here we go. <laughs> Okay, I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> wow. If you think that's nothing, keep in mind this was the beach just a few days ago when the waters were actually calm. Blending very well. Blending well. Yeah. I think you've seen kids a couple of times. This is a nice small place. Woo! Northern, like the BVI and stuff, they use the US dollar, so it's not gonna take place. We were notified that apparently there's gonna be a hurricane today, now, Thursday, that may impede our flight back home. And initially I was thinking, okay, well, if the hurricane does happen, we're probably gonna be compensated for like staying an additional day or whatever, because I know they're gonna make us pay again. But then today we find out that because this natural disaster is out of Air Canada's control, which it is, um, they're not gonna compensate us. Like we just have to take money out of our own pocket and pay for an extra stay here. And I'm just thinking like, okay, but as much as it's out of their control, it's also out of our control. So why do we have to suffer for it? And the airline themselves can afford it more than we can, especially after this trip, you know? It makes no sense whatsoever. 
with Air Canada, it's like they've been servicing Caribbean islands for a very long time. Yes. As of right now, our flight is still a go. It's not canceled. They're kind of waiting to see what happens tonight. But like I was saying, Air Canada knows that this Ooh. stuff happens. <laughs> and I feel like they should be proactive and have measurements in place where it's like, okay, if our travelers are flying out and they are impeded based on environmental factors or whatever, I feel like they should have accommodations already put in place or have like a hotel or somewhere where your your guests can, your customers can stay in order to compensate them. Because the same way how it is out of their control, it is also out of our control. It's not like we're voluntarily trying to miss our flight. Yeah. For us to spend another night here, it's like 270 US, 270 but it would US. be 380 Canadian. Why doesn't Air Canada partner with hotels around the area? But in the state of an emergency, it's like we reserve the right for a couple rooms where our customers can go and stay. Yeah. It's not even just Air Canada. I feel like other airlines should be that proactive. You yeah. Know? But it's like we met another couple who's from the UK, mm -hmm. and they were supposed to fly out today but the airport is closed and they're like, oh, our airline is gonna compensate us for everything. Like, it's as easy as that. They're coming from the British Airlines, by the way, so the fact that they compensate the, the extra stay, the extra stay, like, that's a big thing on their part. Yeah. Like, that couple is over there playing volleyball right now. Like, they're good, they're chilling because they know everything is covered. They're, they don't have to worry about any additional expenses because their airline got them. The thing is, Air Canada needs to follow those same footsteps because it really is as easy as that. Do something to compensate your customers in the event that something that is out of everyone's control, that it's like everyone wins in the end. Exactly. Where it's a fair trade-off. For those of you who are gonna watch this, Hi. Hi. So we have a storm, but all right. <laughs> well, we were just told that our room has a potential to flood, so we're gonna have to relocate right above us um, sometime soon. But yeah, that kind of scares me a bit. <laughs> I mean, at least the hotel is doing something about it, right? One of the staff and I we were talking yesterday. He was saying how the resort does have a tendency to flood because it's kind of like down and a lot of the doors kind of have like crevices where water can't creep in. Mm -hmm. Remember did the infrastructure, they really do a great job. Yeah, I don't think they found it through properly. Well, that's gonna be our day, so wish us luck. Yeah, just pray that we make it home safe in one piece. Before it got cut off, what I was gonna say is, for those of you who are gonna say, oh, why y'all complaining, y'all should have did your research, you should have yeah. known better. We did do our research. There was no hurricane watch at all going on. It is something that we try to plan around because I am from the Caribbean and I do know when it's hurricane season. It just so happened that, hey, it's mother nature, can't control that. And I know we all are saying, stop complaining, just deal with it, whatever, that's what we are doing. But what all we're saying is Air Canada or the resort or whatever can come up with a better plan to be proactive for people who do run into situations like this. Yeah. And it's not even just this resort or just Air Canada, that's any airline in general. Mm -hmm. And for us to be here and be here with other people from different parts of the world and learn that they are being compensated, yes. it's almost kind of like, okay, a well. slap in our face. Exactly, and I feel like that should be a guideline or a bylaw that should be passed for all airlines. At the end of the day, if we can't leave, nobody's coming. That means that the same room that we're in is not gonna be occupied at the end of the day. Because exactly. that guest that's coming ain't arriving. Yeah. So it's like, at the end of the day, you can move things around to accommodate for that. Like I said, we did do our homework. That's why we traveled this month and this week to accommodate for that. Because I know hurricanes usually start in July and August. This one just happened to just happen like that. Anyway, we're gonna try to figure out this room situation and probably catch a drink because it's about to be a long day and a long night.
<laughs> I love my life too much. These men are really cheering <laughs> every time the waves hit. One thing I do not miss about living in the islands is that hurricane, bro. These hurricanes hit different. Alright guys, forgot to film last night, but basically we made our way into the upstairs portion of the resort. So we used to be downstairs, of course, right down there. So yeah, they just had to take any precautions possible in order to make sure everyone was safe during last night's hurricane. And to be honest, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like there wasn't a lot of damage at all. There was just a lot of like tree branches that fell. Not big ones though, actually big enough, but <laughs> the waves were crazy last night. Like they reached all the way up to the fence. You saw like just the splash of the water going upwards. So you know how tall those waves must have been to see it all the way from here. Well, we appreciate the effort to have evacuated everyone because the bottom portion of the resort definitely would have flooded because it's flat on the ground and the waves could have just come over onto the resort and just like spread into the rooms and then it wouldn't have been a nice morning. So I'm glad that they were uh, proactive about that. Uh, it is pretty much the last day here in St. Lucia. Interesting experience because the resort itself wasn't the most ideal. Well, to be honest, no, the resort itself physically was gorgeous. Like I still think this is such a pretty resort. I could use some work, like the rooms are a little bit outdated, but they they do their job gorgeous land gorgeous grounds and the mountain in the back is definitely a steal like that's pretty much what sold me here but in terms of the service it could definitely use some work literally day seven which was yesterday is when we finally got straws so that should tell you a lot um and they were finally not out of iced tea and not out of peanuts on day seven as well so we were very excited about that, okay? We were very excited about that. Uh, overall, it was a great experience. Don't worry, this is facing me. Overall, it was a great experience. And and I would definitely come back to St. Lucia, uh, maybe to a different resort. Although, we're hearing talk of the fact that this resort will soon be demolished and rebuilt as a new. So we're kind of curious to see how that's gonna turn out. Um, it's definitely going to be more pricey, we think. But yeah, I, I just want to see what they can build out of this because there's definitely a lot of potential on this area, this lot right here. So I would definitely return to St. Lucia, especially for Carnival, which happens in July. But anyways, thanks guys for watching. I don't know if this is going to be the last clip, but just in case, natural hair grows. Don't you forget it. Bye.